The Vanguard is a long-range deep space fighter from Aegis Dynamics. It is currently on concept sale until the 6th of April. It's available for $250 excluding taxes and comes with uh, lifetime insurance, two bits of hangar flare which is a poster and like an airfix model um, of the Vanguard uh, as well as the asteroid hangar. I'm going to read some of the fluff and information about the ship, then look at her stats and talk about whether she is worth buying with your hard-earned money. The A3G Vanguard is the United Empire of Earth's dedicated deep space fighter. Initially developed as a bomber destroyer, the Vanguard is a hard-charging bulldog of a ship which features extensive forward-mounted weaponry designed to tear through the shields and armour of another spaceship. Four high-caliber forward laser cannons and a massive central Gatling gun give the Vanguard an unprecedented amount of sheer striking power. So named because their multiple jump range allows them to form the forefront of any military expedition, Vanguard have seen extensive service against the Vandal. The Vanguard trades the maneuverability of the Hornet, Lightning and Gladius for extended range, armour and durability. With more hardpoints and increased space for onboard computer systems, the design can boast improved radar and a credible electronic warfare suite. In combat, the Vanguard's sole roles are extensive, long-range jump scout, extended duration patrol reconnaissance ship, fighter bomber when equipped with torpedoes, tactical command and control ship, bomber interceptor, and in the proper hands, even a fighter killer. The Vanguard's extensive range can allow for missions lasting days or even weeks. Internally, the ship is fitted with sleeping berths and reclamation facilities to support such missions. With a notable silhouette, the Vanguard is best known for its distinctive twin X forge engines, which allow for both an impressive top speed and an extensive backup system for enhanced combat survivability. Coupled with a superstructure composed from a distinct tungsten alloy, more than one Vanguard pilot has returned to base with little more than a single engine and the charred remains of the fuselage. Vanguard units have been assigned to both planetary bases and aboard larger space stations. The fighter's legendary durability allows it to operate in all weather conditions with limited maintenance and makes it particularly beloved by the hard-fighting UEE Marines, who make frequent use of its ability to comfortably operate from makeshift bases. Though Aegis Dynamics does not officially offer a civilian variant of the Vanguard, working in conjunction with the UEE's Frontier Protection Program, they have made a number of the mil-spec Vanguard available to civilians. I have totally fallen in love with this ship. I think the Vanguard, pretty much anything that Aegis Dynamics makes, is totally beautiful. And this ship is very expensive, $250, especially just for a two-man ship. But she is absolutely beautiful. Let's talk more about her stats. The Vanguard is going to take up a large slot in your hangar. I expect it to take up three ship slots if you were going to carry it on an Idris or another carrier. Um, it's got two crew stations, although I think it will be totally flyable solo. Uh, two size two power plants for redundancy. So you can lose bits of your ship um, and you're still going to have all the power you need to power all your stuff. And also, if you're going to have laser builds, then you're going to need those two power plants. Please remember that the hard points and sizes have just had a big change. So all these ships are going to get updated with a more standardised stats set. The Vanguard's got two TR-4 engines moving 45,000 kilograms of mass. So it's probably going to be pretty damn fast. Not manoeuvrable though, but I'd expect speeds of around 250. It says a max shield 2 on the uh, stats page at the moment, but I'm assuming this will be an equivalent to a size 4 or 5 shield in the old system. It also comes with a survival pod, so the Vanguard is going to be extremely survivable, very well armoured, with loads of technical shizzle whistle. I expect that survival pod is basically an escape pod um, made out of the cockpit. Um, it also talks about it in the fluff that we mentioned earlier, that it's going to have like the E-War suite, so it's going to be able to do electronic warfare. Um, you can outfit it to be a torpedo bomber. Um, uh, it's got all those missiles. Let's have a, actually a look at some of her weapons. So we've got four size 2 M4A laser cannons. So that's four size 2 mounts uh, just on the front of the ship. We've also got a uh, size 6 manned turret that currently has uh, two Badger laser repeaters on it, um, on the top, top middle of the ship. Um, eight size two missiles and a huge size four APOC death ballistic Gatling gun uh, under the cockpit. I love the name of that weapon and I love the way that that big Gatling gun looks. You can also add torpedoes to make her into a torpedo bomber too. 
This is a damn lot of weaponry on a very powerful big frame. That huge Gatling gun, all of those size 2 mounts. You could mount 6 Omni Sky 6s and have it backed up by that huge Gatling gun and a whole world of missiles. When compared to the Super Hornet, the Vanguard isn't going to be as manoeuvrable and is a lot, lot bigger, much easier to hit. But it's going to have a lot more firepower, it's more durable and massively multi-role. In fact, the Vanguard seems to be a high tier ship that you can pretty much do any combat role in well. It has that E-War suite if you want to mess around with electronic warfare. Um, it can be a torpedo bomber, has proper living quarters. It's a two-man ship as well, so you can have your mate doing one of those other things or using the turret. And this is a perfect ship to do dangerous exploration in too, if you're actively seeking out stuff to kill in faraway systems, say. Now, the Vanguard is really expensive for $250 excluding taxes. It's a lot to pay, so I can't recommend it unless you are a massive, massive fan of that ship or you need like a top tier fighter because you just have to have it. Or if money's no object and you need to purchase space pixels. But if money is no object and you want the heavy, the heavy fighter that can be made to suit any combat role, then the Vanguard is the best choice. It's not really a dogfighter though, it's fighting style is that of a knight smashing through, whereas the Hornet is a, a, a or the Gladius is dogfighters, they're heavy skirmishers. Want a small dogfighter? Pick up the Gladius or Hornet at a much cheaper price. I have picked up the Vanguard because I want to use it to clear out um, areas of Vandal NPCs and to do hard combat missions with Solo. Also, I think she is the most beautiful ship I have ever seen in Star Citizen so far. I want to scout out sectors, explore, fight, mess around with electronic warfare, um, and for other ships to be genuinely scared when they see me. The Vanguard ticks all of those boxes. Please check her out, I'll put all the links down below at the bottom of the page. If you want a combat ship with a load of guns, is incredibly durable, and can do a lot of other stuff, just combat, it's, it's mainly combat, you'd have to want to do combat to buy a Vanguard. Um, Although they, they, they even talk about her being a mobile command centre and that sort of stuff as well. But just for the amount of hard points for weapons and torpedoes and missiles, you just you have to want to be doing combat. You can really see the Vanguard was modelled on World War II um, night fighters. And I love the way those wings curl back. It's just a beautiful ship. You need to check her out. Please do. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. It really does help me. Check out this stupidly expensive but amazingly beautiful ship and grab her if you've got the spare cash. She's LTR at the moment, so that can't hurt. Um, obviously, she will be on sale again when she's hangar ready, but uh, grab her now if you want that LTI and you want to support the Vanguard uh, and Star Citizen. Although, if you don't have the money, don't. It's always silly to spend money on fake in-game things if you haven't got silly money to spend anyway. And $250 is insane.